Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So this is obviously a new tire inflator. This one is from Grepro. Full disclosure, they did send this in for review. Thank you very much, but they have no say in the review material. And I have already been using this. So this is not going to be a true unboxing, but I put everything back to show you guys how it comes. We're going to unbox it, go through the features real quick, use it, and then I'll give you my thoughts at the end. So this is a portable tire inflator. If you've had one in the past, you're going to be very familiar with it, but there are certainly some features in here that seem to carry over from brand to brand and model to model. We've got a carrying bag in here. If you want that, we have the unit itself. Inside the box is just a user manual and it is a very good manual here under here is just our cord here to attach to the vehicles. We've got a USB C to USB C charging cord, no charger. Note that we'll talk about that in a second. And then the usual adapters for all your different types of devices onto the good stuff. We have the inflator itself and they do have this warning on here to fully charge it before use. Now mine came with a 75% charge, typical for production and shipping purposes. It does not have fast charging capability. We've got in and out, both are simply two amps and it took about two hours to go from 75 to hundred percent. So if you do have yours quite depleted, note that it will take quite some time to fully charge. That's really only going to be a case if you use it a lot and forget to recharge it, or if you're using it as a battery bank. However, I don't think many people these days are going to be using this as a battery bank because the output is also limited to just two amps. So not really that useful for phones or tablets. If you were thinking about doing it with that, I left this on for your satisfaction. Let's peel this off for the first time. Oh, <laughs> That didn't work. Hang on. Fingernails work. Beautiful. As far as basic operation for anyone new, we've got your controls all right here. Power button and start stop switch is right in the middle. Hold it down to power on and you're greeted with a display. Now it looks a little dim on camera, but that's just the camera view. If you're looking at it straight on, it is certainly bright enough. It's not an overly bright display, but it's not what I would call dim. I'm just making a note because looking on my screen here, it appears to be dim. That's just on camera. So no worries about that. We do have slight differences here in the control and the screen with a lot of past models. You only had four, what I'm going to call presets. I'll show you those in a second. This has five. So that's pretty cool. And it's almost perfect. Almost. I, I have no problem with what they're doing here. They, I've said this in, I don't know, the past three or four of these, they could still make an improvement and just call these one, two, three, four, five, instead of doing what they do and having symbols here, car, motorcycle, bicycle, ball. And this is just a, a user preset is what they're basically going for. So as you can probably see, we've got a button here on the right hand side of the, what looks like a D pad. And this toggles between the different presets. Now they're almost perfect. The only different one is the ball and you're limited to 16 PSI in that mode. All the other ones you max out at, let me verify here. All of the other ones you can max out all the way up to 60 PSI, but the ball is limited to 16. So, not a big deal, but it basically for me makes that fourth preset slot useless because I use this for vehicles only. So what I use these for is one slot for my front motorcycle, one slot for my rear motorcycle, the tires, and then same with the car front and rear. Now, if you have more vehicles than that, maybe your presets will be at the same points, but you'll might have to manually adjust. So just note that, but it does save your settings. And then you have the units of measure over on the side. And what you do to change that between the four is hold down the right button and you can see it switches here in the U S we pretty much only use PSI. So we're going to go to that and make sure you hold it down until it switches. If you release it a little early, it just bumps to the next one. Now it does save what you set each one to. So that's why I use those as what I call presets and it works very well when it is not blinking. 
it's reading live. So while you're inflating or while you just connect it to something, it will show you the live pressure. When it's blinking, it's in your set mode. You got your battery display up top in just four segments and it blinks while you're charging. Up and down is how you change your pressures. And then we have the light button over here on the left. Now this is one of the cool new features. Usually it's just a white light that will go from a steady flashlight and then to a blinking and then sometimes to a blinking SOS. This one foregoes the static blinking white and adds something new. So we've got our regular on and it's, it's good enough to point it at what you're trying to screw into. That's what I consider the main purpose of the flashlight feature, but you can see here on my hand, not overly bright. I've had another model that was truly like a floodlight. That's good for lighting a whole area of the ground, for instance, but this is good enough to see what you're doing to connect to. And then you have an SOS. So you could set this on the ground or if you're hiking or something or camping or whatever, it might grab somebody's attention, but again, not overly bright, but you could see it from a distance. And then you've got red. Now on camera, this looks pink. It looks very faded, but in real life, this is quite red. It's just like a brake light. This is really cool. This would be good on the road, for example. You set this down next to the tire you're inflating and you point it backwards at oncoming traffic. This grabs your attention so much better than a white light. Trust me, your eyes see this and they immediately go to it. So that's really cool. So those are your features there for the light itself. Let's go ahead and unwind this. It is a simple screw in. You've got a soft rubber thingamabob here. It does not freely spin. So what you have to do is get it started and then either turn this around, turn both around, or just turn the cable and screw it in. So it's a little, little funky. I probably would just leave this connected all the time, but once it's in there, it's easy to snug down and it's comfortable to get a grip on and you're done. And then we have, and it is generously long. This is the first one out of the box where it's perfect. This will get into every kind of motorcycle. It's not overly stiff. It's got tons of flexibility as a matter of fact, and you've got a nice normal flip connector to lock it in place. This is simply the way all of them should be done. So if you want to take it off, you can, but you don't need to put any kind of adapters on it and you're not going to be holding this up. It's long enough to put on the ground. It doesn't matter if you've got a big truck tire, you can put this on the ground, probably like this, standing it up and this will reach all the way up. Even if your valve stem is stuck up at the top of your wheel, you've got plenty of clearance. I have about two feet from the bottom of this to the nozzle. So kudos, great design there. All right, let's go ahead and get this out. We'll see how loud it is. You've just got vents here on the, oh, well, I'll show you now, but I was gonna mention it next time. Okay, um, you're not gonna see this. When it powers on, I'll do it one more time. Hopefully it catches on camera. Look in the upper right-hand corner, there's going to be a red little icon. Hopefully you can see it. Overheat protection built in. It shuts down when it gets too hot. All of these get too hot. It, that's just part of how they work. They have very small little pistons. Some are plastic, some are metal, but they all get super hot from just normal use. Now the instructions on all of them are going to say, let it rest after you use it for five or 10 minutes, for 15 minutes to cool down, that kind of thing. This eliminates the guesswork. When it gets too hot, it shuts down until it cools off. So it saves itself from you accidentally damaging it. And I absolutely love that feature. Okay, let's go plug it in. So here you can see how much room we've got to work with. Like I said, plenty of length, no matter what you're working on. One other cool feature is it does automatically shut off after about a minute of non-use. So you don't have to worry about it draining as some older generations where you had to manually turn it off. Now, as we turn it on, we're gonna see the live pressure. I want this rear tire to be 42, for example. So we're gonna turn it on. It'll give us a real-time reading. It's at 36. No, I haven't ridden in a while. <laughs> it's still gonna be a little while. Got a leg injury, still healing. We're getting close. All right, 36.4 is what it's at. 
So we're going to go up to 42. Once it reaches that point, it automatically shuts off. I'm on my phone now because the microphone is going to be much better at picking up the sound of this versus my lavalier, which would cancel a lot of it out. So we're just going to go a couple feet away from here, turn it on. You just tap this to get it going once it's connected to something. And let's go. So that took just about one minute to go from 36 to 42 and that was not sped up at all now one interesting thing i just saw the battery gauge come down this was from a 100 percent fresh charge i had topped it off before i started this video and this was the only use for it so either that gauge is just overly sensitive or it's insanely using the battery because that one minute did not certainly use 25% of the battery charge. What I suspect is the reporting feature of the battery is off. <laughs> so just note that. Um, I simply have not sat here and run it for however long it takes to completely run it out. I can't tell you that. I haven't done that with any of mine, but I've never in use got them to even start to slow down. So they do have big enough batteries for normal or emergency use for sure. And there you can see how long it takes to automatically shut off. All right, so there you go. If you're looking for one, this one right now, I'll put a link down below. It's on sale for about 35 bucks, somewhere around there. Now, of course, prices change all the time, but right now with these features, I think this is an absolute steal. That's it, see you next time.